another virtual another virtual community connections. It'll be on February 29th, and we hope you'll all be able to join us. We'll get you more information about that soon. And from here, I'm gonna turn it over to Sherry, our vice president, and let her take over. Hey, everybody. Thank you again for coming out tonight. Um, it's really exciting to see so many different participants. So we're gonna get right to it. We've got a couple of speakers. They're kind of in tandem. <clears throat> They're amazing women. I met them at Vision Walk and really just snagged them for a speaker because we're going to learn a lot tonight. Uh, first, we have Kristen McDonald, and she's the ambassador for the California Stem Cell Agency and a very well known spokesperson. We're going to learn about Kristen's journey not only with RP, but as a participant in the j -Side experimental stem cell trial that was designed to rescue photoreceptor cells. Um, Kristen has been friends and worked with our other additional speaker. You get, you get two tonight, uh, Jacqueline Hankin. And Jacqueline is the Senior Advisor, Community Outreach and Advocacy for the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, also known as CRM. It's a lot of big words, but the bottom line is she has decades of experience working in patient and medical research advocacy, community outreach, education and development. And really, I would say one of her claim to fame is for those of you who might remember, back in 2004, there was a campaign for California's Proposition 71, which actually formed the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine and provided $3 billion for stem cell and related research to develop therapies and cures for chronic illness and disease. So that was so instrumental back then and it's why we have so many experimental trials going on today. So I am going to turn it over to our speakers tonight and I wanna thank them very much uh, for joining us. First, we'll start with Kristen. Wonderful, thank you so much, Sherry. And I just wanna make sure that I am not to unmute myself, correct? Correct, you just okay. take it from Perfect. here. Wonderful. So good evening to everyone. And I'm so excited about this, this event. And thank you for registering tonight. And also thank you to the foundation from my heart and especially to Sherry Lawrence and to Shauna Casey, you know, and she just explained we met on the vision walk. So before I go into a little bit about being one of the first people to receive stem cells in my eyes, practically in the world, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on my life and my philosophy about blindness and about just life in general, because the, the mind, body, and spirit all go together. I grew up riding horses. They were my passion in a beautiful suburb of New Jersey. And uh, I got my first horse at 13, couldn't wait to ride you know, those beautiful horses every single day. I was very athletic. And then I later developed, I always had an interest in acting and hosting. So I started studying, you know, through college and after college and got an internship at WABC TV in New York. And the news was very exciting in Manhattan. It just was really wasn't my thing. So I produced a couple of telethons and then I moved to the West Coast and landed an agent and bought a little red sports car. I was about 29 years old at the time. And at that point, my biggest worry in life was really, how would I get a job on the West Coast? You know, how would I land an acting gig? And I didn't really know that I had something lurking over my head, you know, which I was soon to discover. So um, I soon landed, you know, I soon landed a role on the NBC soap opera, a small recurring. Oh, no, I got it. I got it. And um, played Mason Capel's secretary. Who was always getting herself into trouble and everything in my life was coming up roses 
I also worked on the Spielberg movie, standing in for Julia Roberts and Caroline Goodall. And every day I went to work and called home and said, God, I worked with Robin Williams today. And I saw Dustin Hoffman and I ran lines with George Clooney. Life was really just my oyster. And I will tell you today, when I watch Netflix and everything else, I can't identify half of the actors. And most men that I meet tell me that they look like George Clooney. <laughs> so I was working at NBC. And at this point, I had broken my arm once the year prior. And the second time happened at the NBC cast party for a Christmas party. And that fall sent me to the eye doctor. And at this point, I just thought I needed glasses only to be told, like many of you have probably experienced a horror story if you have an eye diagnosis, that I either had a brain tumor or I was going to slowly go blind. So obviously the news kind of paralyzed me and I drove home on Hollywood Boulevard that day and, and let out, I bellowed a scream. You know, the first vision of what I thought my life would be was not going to come to pass. Both of these doctors lacked bedside manner and I talk about it a lot in my talks. In the last few years, I've been very blessed as an ambassador to speak to many different doctors and pre-med students about the importance of bedside manner and how you can make or break a person's life by the words that you say to them. You know, one of them saw some of my tears and said, you better buck up and deal the life that, you know, the cards that you've been dealt. And I'm sure he meant well that day. He just didn't have a personality. So fortunately for me, at that point, I was going. To, I, I got a second diagnosis. My dad was a physician, and he worked very hard at finding Dr. Heckenlively at Jewel Stein. And what Dr. Heckenlively gave me at that moment was hope, because we all need hope, no matter where you're at. In you know, in the beginning of your diagnosis, in the middle, of the end, all of us need hope in life. He said you can live a full life, and they're working on things. They're working on stem cell genetic therapy, gene therapy. But this was years ago. But I had the hope in my heart, so. I tried to reinvent myself. You know, working in television demanded a lot of reading scripts and I was accused of being legally blonde before anyone knew I was legally blind. And I kept a secret at work when I later worked in production for Aaron Spelling and his partner, Duke Vincent, who were two of the most powerful men in Hollywood at the time. I had to go behind the scenes because, you know, giving up my dream in front of the camera was just difficult. I had to give up driving and so forth. But Aaron came out of his office one day and he looked like he was wearing some sort of an apparition on top of his head with these two light bulbs. And he came toward me and in a throaty kind of voice that he was noted for, he said, I bought these candy and I bought these for you, hoping you could read scripts, you know? And I realized he had bought me a pair of glasses with big headlights, kind of like my Zoom lights right now. So I never forgot that. But my point being, that was his way of saying, I know your secret and I'm here to help. So I was very supported in my job that way. I was very lucky. And I stayed there until Aaron passed away. And then I segued into doing inspirational speaking and now you know, a lot of ambassador work for, for CIRM and first for Americans for Cures. So anyway, blindness didn't come with an instruction booklet. The diagnosis of RP, which 2 million people in the world, I believe share, you know, it's a small amount of people, didn't come with an instruction booklet. It came with a lot of mobility training, as many of you I'm sure are, are very aware of. And, uh, a barrage of kitchen cabinets that I bumped into or, or steps that I tripped on. But I managed um, one night, in fact, my neighbor came over and saved me, my wonderful neighbor down the hall because the potholders were on fire and they were two, about two feet away from where I was eating dinner. But with years of practice, <laughs> I can cook many things now safely. And I remember going out in the neighborhood one night with a mobility counselor and his name was Bob. And I was scared to carry the cane. And I said, well, Bob, what do I do if I see a cute guy? And he says, you just hand the cane to me. And you say, Bob, you're doing a great job. So it was people like that that kept my, my immunity up, you know, with laughter and, and a, a great attitude. And I, I recommend anyone using laughter to boost your immunity. Years ago, I read the book by Norman Cousins, Anatomy of an Illness. So I still search YouTube for the best comedians and, and try to keep laughing. In fact, at one point, my sister and I were working on a chapter for a book called 100 Blind Dates based on some of the comedy that was happening in my life because I'm right now reading The Country of the Blind by Andrew Leland, and he talks about the difficulty of dating and socializing, you know, when you're losing your sight and the loss involved in it. So my sister used to select some of the guys on the internet and pretend she was me for a day or two. And then I would, of course, you know, come clean and I'd meet them on the date. And one time I went to a, a restaurant down the road and I, I saw, you know, it took about 10 minutes to connect with this guy. We just couldn't focus on each other. We bumped into each other on the way to the table 
And when we sat down, we took our Chardonnays and our glasses missed like two ships in the night. So when I dropped the bomb that I didn't drive at night, he said, um, do you have retinitis pigmentosa? And I said, why would you say that? How'd you know? And he said, because I have it. And I think you have it too. <laughs> what would have been the likelihood that two people on the internet would have both had RP? And as he walked me out of the restaurant, I later told our same eye doctor by coincidence that he rammed me into a, a shopping cart on the way to the car. So there was no, no romance there. Anyway, I tell you this because these kind of little projects and that that book later became a chapter in the book um, is called 100 Blind Dates, Unwavering Strength. So in addition to that, I, I, I remember dealing with the loss, you know, with retinitis pigmentosa, you know, as you all know, it's like a beautiful movie that's colorful and it slowly fades to black and white. And suddenly you're just listening to the radio and going to the movies used to be a great pleasure for me because I was in the entertainment business. And one night I had the, the experience of having dinner with Leonardo DiCaprio because my best friend, Terry Moore had worked with him and he saw us in a restaurant. So he said to me, God, how, how do you deal with that going to the movies? I said, you're the last person in the Titanic that I saw sinking this seriously. That's the last time I went and I saw anyone. And he just took my hand and we both kind of laughed, but I knew inside he was crying. You know, he was a very compassionate person. And a, a few weeks later, I actually tripped down the stairs and fell with Terry Moore at the Academy of Television and Arts and Science. Not the splash that I wanted to make in my real life, but that forced me to constantly carry the cane, you know, after falling down head first. And luckily neither one of us killed ourselves. So needless to say, I never gave up hope for stem cell. And, and I, I wanna mention earlier that I had forgotten to say, I had wonderful family support during this, even though they live miles away. I have a, a sister who helps me endlessly she's my hero because she was hit by a drunk driver when she was age 28. And that was just a few years before my parents found out I was diagnosed with this. And my beautiful brother had offered me one of his eyes. You know, he said, if, if I could ever do that, that, that would be my way of helping. So I knew in his heart, he was just trying to say, you know, there was no way to solve this, you know, at that point. And he would help if he could. So fast forward, you know, to dealing with what I call my second vision. Second vision is reinventing your life's dream and vision when your first one fails. We all have to do it. We all suffer from something in this lifetime. And that's been the name of my podcast on Airs LA for many years. It's overcoming adversity with your three best attitudes, acceptance, appreciation, and the right action to take your goals. At this point, I started volunteering, you know, fundraising for eye research and so forth, and was working behind the scenes in television. And then later, uh, you know, started doing the inspirational speaking. And I was over the moon to find out when I got a phone call after applying for Dr. Henry Clausen's study for JSite. Uh, he and his wife, Jing Yang, were the creators of this study. And Dr. Lawson had been studying retinitis pigmentosa for as long as I've been tripping over things. So I, I trusted his studies. And you have to go through quite a bit, you know, as many of you might already know, to, to apply for a clinical trial. This was in 2015. And uh, I was very, very lucky. There were many, many people. I don't know if it was into the thousands on the list to get on to be number one in this study. But I was really over the moon. I sat here with my boyfriend that day and we both clapped and I got an injection about a month or two later into my left eye for when I got a half a million cells in 2015 in that eye. And that eye, believe it or not, has given me what I call the light at the end of the tunnel. That can be a big burst of light that I've not lost. And, you know, because RP is basically like a donut and there's a lot of, uh, let's say the mouse has come and eaten some of your your bread inside the, the donut or the bagel, you have islands that are left. You know, mine looked kind of like that. And then the center was slowly going, but I had some on the peripheral and some of these islands. Well, the stem cell helped very much to rescue many of those islands that were rescuable. When you've had the condition for as long as I have, you know, many decades, I didn't get the same effect that other people in the study, some young people did. They got a big boost from it. And I urge you to read some of those studies. It's not really my story to tell, but there were some very promising studies for people early with, with RP. So in 2017, I received 6 million cells in my right eye. No, 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 I'm sorry, a million cells in my right eye. And I got some boost in the islands in my peripheral vision, 
just in terms of light, not really acuity, but 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 a lot of light perception that I didn't have before. And that I received 6 million cells in 2020. That was gonna be my year. I remember giving a speech saying, that's the year I see a face, but that's another subject to expectations. You know, there's there's a lot of expectations that that happen when you go into a study. And in a sense, I almost set myself up for that because I was told they didn't really think at my stage that I might see a face, but they were hopeful and nobody likes to be negative in the beginning, but I was of course the first test subject. So needless to say, um, I have maintained that vision and I can see these zoom lights very well, each one of them, but I have to kind of dart around. But they've both big round circles of light. And truthfully, you know, whether it sounds impressive or not, to me, the glass is half full because with RP, I always had that lurking sense in the back of my head, a little bit of insomnia. I didn't walk around, especially after accepting, accepting my situation in a fearful state, but you never get rid of that haunting feeling, you know, sometimes in the middle of the night or just any time when you, when you miss a step or, or you think about your eyesight, you think, where will I be in five years or six years? So the stem cell was definitely something that, that restored my hope. And I, I still feel for the future that there'll be more. They'll, they'll, they will perfect the progenitor cells or the human cells. It'll marry gene therapy. Um, there's many, many different things going on, you know, in, in, uh, in medicine now. And Jacqueline will be here soon to talk about the 96 trials that we have going on at CIRM. Very exciting. And thanks to Dr. Clausen. I was recommended to be a speaker and an advocate for First Americans for Cures and then CIRM. And that's how Jacqueline and I connected. So Jacqueline has a wealth of information to share with you. But I, I wanted to also say that, you know, I remember producing telethons in early in my career when I had 2020 eyesight, working with kids with disabilities. And I worked with the late actor, uh, Christopher Reeves, and I handed him a cue card saying, you know, we're all one step away from a disability and here, you know, unfortunately he's not here today because of the spinal cord injury. And we both share that love of horses. And here I am, you know, legally blind. However, we have made such advances in medicine now. You know, the Americans spend $4.2 trillion a year in medical costs, and we could cut that in half with preventative medicine. So again, that's Jacqueline's area, but um, I wanted to leave you on this note, be proactive never give up hope, have hope in your heart, but don't live for a cure. I was guilty of that at one point in my life too. Live for the moment, it's what we have, but never give up hope for the future. I haven't given up hope that I will see all of your faces on Zoom one day, even if it's a partial face. Well, thank you. Kristen, thank you so much. That was quite a talk, I think even more than I expected, and I'm sure we have questions. But we're going to now go straight to Jacqueline and learn more from Jacqueline. And then I promise you all, we'll get to everybody's questions. Either keep your hands raised or do feel free to jot it down in the chat um, if you're able to do so. Yes, we love the interaction, just as a last note. You know, please, please ask questions. I'm, I'm not a scientist, but I can tell you the human experience. Fantastic. Okay, Jacqueline, thank you. Well, thank you so much, and and thank you. It's it's always a wonder to uh, hear you, Kristen, again. No matter how many times I've I've heard you speak, there's always another little light, uh, literally. And today, I think the thing that I heard most, and the word that I wrote down was hope. Um, you provide that to me personally, and uh, hopefully to this this community, and the ability to share the work that we do together. I too am not a scientist, so I want to make that very clear. I'm a patient advocate and I'm an advocate for patients. Um, and I find myself in this, I found myself in this role accidentally, like most of us, I, I would presume. Um, a little bit about my story is that my father, a blessed memory, um, who would have turned 82 next Tuesday, uh, next Wednesday, the 24th, um, when he was 59 years old, um, I had a fall due to a seizure and wound up with an incomplete spinal cord injury. I was in 2001. I was pregnant with my second child. And um, like most of us, I think, 
understand what it's like to be in a situation like that where you know the, the earth is moving but wh where are your feet on it um and this too was a progression um i was found myself i think luck lucky in that i was living in california at the time in palo alto and i was got word of through a mutual friend who was on the advisory um, board of the uh, the initiative that became Prop 71 that Sherry spoke of briefly, the California um, Stem Cell Research and Cures Initiative, and I said just get me involved, whatever it is, I will I will do it. And I started out as a volunteer. I started out as being one of those pain in the neck people that you find in the parking lot that says please sign this. Doesn't matter if you you're in favor or if you're against it. It doesn't matter. We need your signature to qualify. And um, and then I carved a position on the campaign in outreach and advocacy and faith-based advocacy, outreach and just sort of like a, a you know, a, a utility player to you know whatever needed to get done. And I really found it to I, you know to be uh, instrumental, inspirational, and incredibly important. And so I, I, I'm lucky that I was able to work on that campaign where you, the voters of California, whether you lived here or not, or remember, but had enough wisdom, 59% of us voters passed the Prop 71, which became known as we established the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. And the, the short story of that was um, that in 2001, the then president restricted the uh, federal funding for um, embryonic stem cell research particularly. Um, and so the state and some geniuses and people who, well, individuals, patient advocates, family members um, coming out of a lot of the JDR space and the father of this movement, Bob Klein, you know, got together and wrote an initiative to kind of take matters into our own hands and say the federal government is not going to support this research. <clears throat> Researchers, private investigator, principal investigators, scientists who 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 understand the pro the, the potential um, in realizing this type of research. Let's see what we can do on a, on a state level. And it is ingenious. And so that initiative passed, and we established the agency. Good. And that was a, a a bond measure of three billion dollars. Fast forward in between, Kristen's research, you know, her work comes in between 2020, where we had another ballot initiative to renew, restore the funding for another five and a half billion dollars, and a billion and a half of that to neurodegenerative um, disease. Um, so where are we? Are to, and and many of you could recall the initiatives. Hopefully, you voted for them. But if you didn't. Here we are today so that you can you can utilize and know about the, the California Stem Cell Agency, regenerative medicine, gene therapy, and and what it's accomplished to date. You know, Kristen is a is, you know, is, is a byproduct of, you know, the, the study that she's undergone and the re, and work that she's affiliated with. Um, we the agency is a funding agency at large and um, to date the allocations for vision impairment and vision loss and RP and uh, macular degeneration and um, uh, damage, the agency has allocated over $208 million towards different phases of this research to in investigators, industry, and so forth. There, um, there was 90, Kristen mentioned, there's 96 clinical trials that the agency has conducted to date. And of that, nine have been in the, in, in the realm of vision loss and um, blindness. And we all, like, like Kristen said, it's really about the hope, not about the expectation. We all know what we get like fumbled up in terms of, you know, that those type of expectations, but the, but, but that's, you know, pretty remarkable that's happened on the state level as a state agency. Now the agency has an opportunity, people can apply to the agency to, uh, for various different RFAs and, and, and different studies and clinical trials and educational grants and so forth. Um, but the money does stay in the state of California. And that you know th those were those are direct initiatives based upon the the, uh, the language of the initiative and what we said we were doing with this money, and there's so much more great hope to come. You know, as a result, today and yesterday, the uh, working there's stand there working um, 
committee, there's various different working class uh, working committees that are um, that govern with the board. And they're working on the community, the community care centers of excellence, which came out of Prop 14 in 2020, and patient support programs. And there's more of this to come, but definitely pay attention to what's happening out of the stem cell agency known as CIRM and and the and the, the incredible things that are going to be happening in the future as it relates to patient navigation, patient support, uh, uh, places for um, for care, we already have nine alpha clinics that are affiliated with different um, institutions throughout the states, and that's to help support the clinical clinical trials um, and and patient navigation, um, and and that's expanding. So, and most of these meetings, or a lot of these meetings, are public meetings that are available through the you know the, the website that you can know about them. There's a a large board the board meeting at large that's next week that most of it is open sessions and to have an opportunity to participate and listen and participate by questions and answers. Um, Kristen and I have worked together. We, I don't, I don't know when I know how long we know each other. I just feel like, I, well, I know you through this journey of stem cell research and the stem cell agency. Um, and it, it brought us to where we are today, meeting Sherry and Adam and others that might've been at the, um, Walk, Kristen, talked to me about it about a few weeks before the events in that was it October, and I said, you know, let me let me come get you and we'll go together. And it was just a delightful, glorious day, and we're here to build these relationships, learn about, um, you know, more about the the foundation, the work that you do, and know that we're in this together with hope and friendship and network and opportunity, but that you, hopefully the voters of California participated in establishing the agency and will look towards the future of the hope and the promise and, and its uh, continued fruition. Um, I hope. <laughs> Jacqueline, that was, that was terrific. I am sure there's so much more that you could talk about as well as Kristen. Um, you know, the main thing we wanna get to questions if anyone has questions, but I think it's, I find pretty amazing, you know, that here we have two people so dedicated to really, you know, hoping, there's that word hope, but hoping to find treatments, cures for all types of disabilities. We happen to have a community, of course, of visual impairment and blindness. And uh, with Kristen, of course, telling her little journey of, having RP, you know, I hope it resonates with everybody. Um, but why don't we now open it up for questions? Um, I'm looking at the chat. I see some nice comments, but I don't see any actual questions. So if anyone has any questions, maybe you could just either raise your hand using the raise hand, if you can, or we could attempt to, if you unmute, and ask your question, um, but hopefully not all at the same time. Hey, hey Sherry, if I may, um, I have a few questions. Um, first, uh, thank you so much, Kristen and Jackson, for being here. Um, you know, that was very inspirational, uh, what you both had to say. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's really a pleasure to hear. And really why we're here is, is because there's some commonality there. And so, a, for a couple of questions to you, to you both, if I may. Um, so, Kristen, you know, you you touched on something that you know I often struggle with uh, in my career, and that you know nobody really in my work knows uh, that I have RP, and that you know I've been dealing with this for many years. Uh, you know, thankfully, uh, my vision has remained intact to some degree, uh, but it's something that you know I've struggled with when you know maybe people have seen me script here or maybe not see something and, and maybe not well with room or something. So, you know, what's, what ideas or suggestions, because I know you also struggled with kind of talking about that. So do you have any suggestions for people uh, in a situation where, you know, maybe they can approach people? Maybe you, you, you think that it would have been best if you would have came out earlier and, and said something. So what is your advice on just letting people know what you have and the condition that they're facing? 
Absolutely. And, you know, I, I could hear most of what you're saying. Some of it is the audio, you know, because you're speaking very clearly. I think it's just a little bit of the connection. So just so I, I'm I'm positive, you're asking sort of when you're not completely out of the closet, right? Like, is it is that a better yeah. thing? Or, yeah. Right. And how do you approach that socially? And that's one reason why I mentioned um, uh, there's many books, but Andrew, Andrew Leland's book is out now, The Country of the Blind. He talks extensively about this. I was reading it on, on the treadmill today at the gym. And it's really interesting because I could identify so much with what he was saying. I have a friend who, who's blind who won't use a cane. And that's okay. That's her choice. But I found my life to be much more difficult then. I, I was... I had one foot in the blind world, one foot in the sighted world, and yet I was accused of being ditzy or stupid sometimes. And when I embraced my situation, after I fell down the stairs and after I got over the, you know, the joke with the mobility counselor, and I, I totally embraced it. Nobody saw the cane. They just saw me. I just found that over and over again. Now, then I was in a catch-22 position, whereas they think, well, you're in the dark. You're totally blind. You, you know that. I'm sure you've had that you know, experience, right? Where they think you're, you're totally in the dark. And I said, well, no, I'm not. I can see. And I used to be able to see. So then I just end up being verbal and communicating to people, but it, the freer you are, then the freer they are is what I always found, you know? And, and also in, unless in case I don't get a chance, I meant to also add knowledge is power. And that was one of the gifts of being able to speak to everyone here tonight. And that's why I encourage, you know, everyone to, to speak up with their questions. You know, my, my dear friend, Tom Sullivan, who is an actor, he was born blind, and he was also my mentor as a speaker. He told me many times, you know, that the more you embrace something, you know, the blindness can't define you. And once you realize that and you own it, then you own the world, really. You know, I just think of the pain as a tool now, you know, I shrug it off. It used to make me feel old and uncomfortable, and but no, you just get past that, you know, and then it, it's, it's a good feeling. It's awkward, but it's a good feeling. Just be more communicative, I would say. Thank you so much for that. Like I said, you know, very inspirational, uh, great story. And I don't want to take up too much time because I'm sure other people oh, have- Oh, my pleasure. Uh, but I'll talk with, uh, you know, you kind of mentioned things and, and funding being extended for five years. So I, I take it that that's coming up next year is when it's going to have to ramp up for sort of another push to get uh, uh, funding again. And and my second part to that question would be, uh, what can we do to help you? You know, thank you so much for doing all the work that you've done uh, to make, you know, so many things possible for a lot of people here. So really thank you for that. But what can we do to get involved to make sure things are, you know, refunded uh, again and that, 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 that funding is available, you know, for years to come? Right. Now, thank you so much. I just want to clarify, um, Jeff, that um, in the, the first it, the first the establishment of the agency in 2004 was to three billion dollars that was utilized in, in incredible work over 2000 you know publications the, the establishment of these alpha clinics the trials and you know so many other incredible incredible um uh works and then we renewed the funding for five and a half billion dollars that right now there's no expiration in terms of that funding so i don't know maybe with, with the five was the five billion dollars or or something so right now there's not a there's not a conversation of another initiative or uh or uh, or, or running out of funds i mean that will happen at some point i presume um but there's no there's not a you know a time period for that right now perfect thank you so much for that yeah i mean you know, it, uh, it so it, it's a it's a very sophisticated bond measure. It's structured as a bond measure, and it, quite frankly, it's a lot above me, which is which is fine um, in terms of you know you know uh, the the actual components of that. Um, and the things that you could do, and that's a really great, great, important question. You know, um, we needed each other, you know, then, and we need each other now, and and really to stay involved and participate. Like I'm, you know. The, the, these two meetings happen today, but we it's really important for the you know board members and uh, people who sit on the um, accessibility and affordable working group and the standards group and others that are again so many of them are public you know meetings to to listen in as you can and make a public comments you know and 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 uh, you know and, and ask you know these questions so internally 
the you know board members and other people who again who sit out in different working groups are aware of what's out, you know what's out there and there's an incredible you know impact that has been made i mean we we couldn't have been where we are today without the patient advocates the patient you know the first go arounds we passed with you know well probably both come you know both initiatives over 100 you know patient um, advocacy organizations, you know, who endorsed the initiative, who endorsed the initiative again, who got the information out. I mean, you know, I guess we could dissect Christians and you could tell us more, Christian, about how, again, how you got asked, you know, to be participating in, you know, the clinical trial that you, you, you were in, and maybe we should, you know, highlight that, but, you know, it really is, it, it almost becomes like word of mouth, Right. I mean, you know, some finding I, we get we get inquiries all the time about um, interest in, you know, in, in participation and, you know, the more inwards uh, and the more information we can disseminate, not just in California, I mean, worldwide will be will, will be better, not just to advance a particular disease or you know orientation, but for, you know, science at large. And, and we really are here together and this agency exists because patients and family members and other people took an interest, even if it was tangential, passed very significant, you know, an initiative with extraordinary sums of money to advance this science. So I think the short answer is stay, you know, stay connected, listen in when you can, you know, when, hopefully one of the, and do, you know, forums like this. So the, you know, so the word is out like, uh, Can I add that? Thank you. yes, go ahead. You know, when I said be proactive, I really mean be proactive as, as many of you know, I'm sure we want to give up going to the eye doctor because the, the, the long days and then coming out of there is so crushing. I remember the years where I, my friends would say, can I call you that night? You want me to call you that night? And I'm, I'm so far past that now, but over the years, it's crushing. Be proactive. My poor doctor over in Beverly Hills, Dr. Liao, I remember it's a second clinical trial I've actually been in, in that uh, office. They're, they're wonderful over there. The first one, I didn't get any results. That was about 12, 15 years ago. And that was crushing. And I had to go through two surgeries. 10 years later, I was still knocking on his door and I, I was just doing everything I could to try to qualify for that study to say, I'm, you know, squeaky wheels, get the grease. And once I even said to him, look, I, I'm just, I'm out of juice. I'm going to go out of the country, you know, and he just urged me, please, we're almost there. We're almost there. So keep a good communication with your doctor, you know, and be proactive because the studies, let's face it, they take sometimes seven to 10 years, even to, well, first to get going, then to happen and then to get approval. So this is what we have now. And, and there's probably a variety of ages on this call tonight, but at least that's a treatment and it's helpful. You know, I was a pathfinder for other people. So that makes me feel good when I go to sleep at night, you know, um, and these younger people are getting bigger results, but there's going to be something for us too. So that's what's out there is are the studies, you know, compare and see what's the best for you. I have a question. I I'm gonna I'm gonna call on people if that's okay, because uh, I'm seeing whose hands are up. So go ahead, Ben. I know your hand's been up for a while, and then Liz, I'll I'll go to you next if that's all right. Yeah, I'll go really quick, uh, Kristen. It's for you. Uh, if you had any, I guess, what were your biggest fears going into the trial at first and getting the injections and the treatments? Well, that's an excellent question, and I meant to address that. There's just so much, you know. Uh, I, I was absolutely a little nervous, but I was more nervous about going into the dark. And because I followed Dr. Clausen's studies and he was so reputable, that's a very important thing. Do your homework, you know, find out, you know, what, where they're doing the study, what it consists of, how, how long they've been studying it and so forth, what the credentials are behind the, the doctors. Um, I had to sign quite a few papers. And, and even at that point, they said, well, it could cause a tumor, this or that, but they all said to me, but they've been uh, design these progenitor cells to to go to a certain place. So they didn't really think that that would happen. Um, but you know, there's always a, a little bit of anxiety because I was number one patient. They've changed it now, but there was like six hours of tests to go through that morning before I even got the injection. So I was exhausted, you know. And all of you know what eye tests are like. They can be very tiring, you know. 
but I was so excited. And I just rode on that enthusiasm thinking, wow, you know, what is this going to do for me? And it did something for me. You know, it did give me a boost and it gave me a level, you know, which is a lot for RP, you know, stabilized me a bit. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Liz, go ahead. Audio now. Um, this question is for Kristen. Hi, Kristen. My name is Liz. Hi, Liz. I had a quick question for you about your stem cell. After you mm -hmm. had the six million cells in your one eye, did you mm -hmm. have a lot of illuminations? I am also a stem cell J site patient. Oh, awesome. I was wondering if when you had your six million cells like I had, um, if you had a lot of illuminations or do you have problems with lighting and how do you deal with lighting if you have problems with any lighting actually no the lights that i have are the, my gifts you know mm -hmm. that that's what it gave me back and maybe another time we could talk you know after time offline connect sometime mm -hmm. um but no i think in the beginning you sometimes see those little christmas tree lights and everything you know uh in the beginning um your eyes a little prickly you know it wasn't painful but it was uh you know, it's a trauma to the eye to go through, you know, you get the injections right into the eye, as you know. So, mm -hmm. so I didn't really have problems with lights. Okay, great. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing with, your story. Sure. Your story. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I hope, I hope you got something from it. I did. Good. Good. Bless you. That's great. Uh, let's see, Roger. Uh, Roger, please unmute yourself. There we go. Hi. Hi. Uh, Kristen, hey, uh, first of all, I really, yeah, great. Thank you for your honesty and and your uh, wit and kind of uh, being funny about hard things. Um, but uh, so as, what advice would you give someone who's got somebody in their family potentially, you know, beginning to deal with this? And what's the best way we could support people in this situation? Is it an early, like they're they're young and they're yeah they're young and it's going to be a journey we're all going to be part of so oh yes 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 uh, so high school or or twenties or uh, old a little in twenties yes a little older yeah so about the time when I was sort of in denial tripping over yeah. things Kristen um, uh, this is Ben back on it's it's me he's referring yeah, it's to. Ben it's yeah, Ben I'm 26 so yeah oh I'm okay oh it's you okay okay yeah, it's me. Yeah. Oh, you're right so it's your yeah. night now what was that. It's your night vision now, not your yeah. day yeah, it's, yeah, it's low night vision and low Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, let me say first off that I can tell you this with, with, um, with faith, with great faith. You will not go through what I went through because you're 26 now and I'm a lot older than you. If I had had that injection when I was 26, I probably would have gotten a huge boost. So like I said, live your life with hope because you're going to be on the brink of some very interesting things, you know, with the stem cells and gene therapy in the next decade. Um, I would suggest one of the things that helped me immensely was dealing with a wonderful empathetic counselor. And because uh, I lived far away from family, even though I had great family support. And that gave me a, a lot of life skills in my back pocket, you know, um, I think the fact that you're aware of it and you're not like me, I was in denial. I was driving. I drove up a one way street, one way on, on the 101 highway with no alcohol in my system and got pulled over by the police. I had no idea what was happening. I was just, just in denial because I didn't want anything to burst my bubble out here with my acting career. You know, um, I got lost in Rancho Santa Fe for two hours with my best friend's dog, you know, a lab who finally got me home. I didn't have a cell phone. The makeup artist chased me out of NBC one night and said, are you okay? Because I was struggling down the stairs. So you're in a much better place than me. You, you know, if knowledge, it, it's much better to be in the know than to not the know, you know? And to just think of the medical advancements, if you can keep being proactive now and possibly, you know, this hopefully will be on the market within the next few years. Yeah, sorry. I uh, I guess to get back to, to Roger's question, what what sort of advice would you give to family members um, for the family other. members. Yes. yes. Well, yes. Cause my family told me that, you know, as much as they tried not to show it, that they may be counseling, you know, because that helped me so immensely. And also just trying to instore as much faith. I mean, um, hope like I have right now infuse your, your son, right. It's your son. 
Uh, is it no. your son? <laughs> Sorry. All right, Ben. How it's do you our want daughter. To... Is that I'm... It, 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 it's our daughter's boyfriend that's in the family, basically. Delaney Wave. Delaney. Delaney is. <laughs> okay, daughter. so Ben, it's not you. You're. I thought you were no, telling ben, me. Ben, no. It, no, sorry. It's basically all... like their son-in-law is what okay. they're saying. Yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. No, I mean, to to help that person, my mother once said to me when I went back to visit her in Ottawa, and she said, you're still you. And I said, that's the greatest thing you can still tell me, you know? So to keep inst in instilling in that person that they can do anything, you know, that they can, there's a lot of training, the more proactive they are with the blind skills and then being proactive to try to find the treatments are the best that you can do. And to also do, you know, the therapy helps because you could be more open socially. It's really horrible to be hiding from it. You know, it's, it's, it's painful. It's painful enough to have that fear, you know, let alone, but, but most people have a great heart, you know, and they're willing to help you know, to try to get them assistance in the areas that can make their life better. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Sure. I just want to interject and say, I think this is just so beautiful. This, this whole little, you know, moments and, you know, Zoom sometimes seems so informal. Um, and that was just, it's really incredible opportunity and, and thank you for sharing and coming together. Yes, thank you. It's, um, it's really, you know, personally is, you know, just back to, you know, to my father and, and, you know, a spinal cord injury and that diagnosis and what that looks like. And, and it, and it is a journey and it is a process. And obviously it's never the same for, you know, each, it's a unique process for, ev for everyone individually, but, but definitely stronger and better together, reaching out and, and doing hard things um, that are scary that you don't have any choice to um, with, with openness. And, and you've already demonstrated that widely here today. And that's, that's so um, that's, that's courageous and, and really monumental. Um, and, and such a great thing to be a part of, you know, the first thing, the first place that helped me was the center for this partially sighted. They're not open anymore. And then I started, you know, doing like auctions for the foundation fighting blindness or some hosting events or volunteering, volunteering, and advocacy work, they've been two of the greatest gifts of my life. You know, being a part of a community just as you're doing tonight, you know, it just gives you strength, you know, strength in numbers. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, does anybody else have any questions? I'm not seeing hands. I know this is, I, I, I'm on my phone because I'm not at home. Okay. And I'm having difficulty raising my hand, but I would like to, this, my name is Ever. I just want to commend both of you. I think you have made some very profound statements. One is never giving up hope. And Chris, you, Kristen, you just, I think, stated something that is extremely important. Until you can get the stem cells, I think it is extremely important to learn blindness skills so that you can continue to have a fulfilling life, uh, but don't give up the hope of getting help that you desire to have. Thank you, Everly. I knew your voice right away. Uh, and, okay. uh, Thank uh, you. Ever, Everly's a friend and, and Everly's one of the first people who told me that years ago, you know, we're dealing with the same condition and I haven't seen her in a long time, but thank you so much. Yep. And that's how I've been able to manage my life for many, many years. And she's fabulous. You're fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Also an author, has a great book on Bard. What's the name of your book? Blind Ambition, One Woman's Journey to Greatness Despite Her Blindness. So yes, yeah. it is on Bard. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for, for asking that question or really just making that statement. I think everybody's heads are kind of nodding and, and agreeing with you. Um, any other questions? Ben, it's Delaney, me. Delaney, <laughs> sorry. Um, I have a, quest a question for Kristen. Um, Kristen, what did you, how did you find out about the study? Was it through your doctor? What did you um, have to do to get yourself in as much or like you don't have to give a lot sure. of detail, but I'm just curious what you, how you got, how you first learned about it and then um, how you kind of qualified for the study. 
Absolutely. Uh, fortunately, I've been with the Rolls Royce of doctors after the bad experiences I had early on, you know, when I was younger. So I, you know, because I used to live in the other side of town, I went to Jules Stein and then I started going to retina vitreous over here in Beverly Hills. And luckily for me, it's around the corner. I had been in a study, as I mentioned earlier with them. I had been in a study about, oh, almost 15, probably 15 years ago, something with them. A genetically modified cell was put into my eye and it was an experiment. And I was told that it was two surgeries, but it, it didn't give me any sort of a boost. But I kept asking every single time, every year I went to the eye doctor, what did they have? And put me on the list, put me on the list. And then when something, they kept saying stem cells coming, well, it was a long time they were saying stem cell was coming. And that's when I almost lost, you know, lost it with my doctor and said, look, I'm gonna go out of the country because I know they're doing it elsewhere. He's, please, please, please don't do that. We're almost there. So basically it was before being proactive, continuing to go to the eye doctor and communicating with them and finding out what they were doing and then going through all the testing because I still had to qualify. And, and that was a little stressful because, you know, I could only see pieces of the letters on the eye chart. And, you know, now it's lucky with the, even the hand motion, but I qualified. I was very lucky. They were looking for people at different stages, you know, with blindness and had had it for so many years. And there were younger people, as I mentioned, and, and, and happy to report that some people got some very good results. And even one of my friends who's 10 years younger, she used to be working, doing uh, ambassador work with Americans for Cures, but she's too busy now, but she got a very big boost, Rosie Pereira. And so much so that she even checked my makeup once before a speech on FaceTime. And uh, that's, I'm really happy to report that. So she got good results. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Good luck to you. Hi, this is Adam again. Um, I just want to thank you both for the presentation. It's been great. Uh, circling back to Roger's question, I just kind of wanted to comment. Um, basically, you were asking about, you know, about family members and stuff. I would say, in my opinion, uh, one thing is uh, acknowledge it. You know, don't kind of like hide it under the rug, so to speak. Uh, but at the same time, don't coddle the person. Uh, you know, one of the biggest things that Sherry does when I, you know, screw up or I mess something up or, you know, I drop something or whatever, she doesn't clean it up. She says, you know, you spilled it, fix it, clean it, whatever. Uh, and also learn what you can about the eye disease uh, so that, you know, you can be as informed as the, you know, your, your loved ones. I think those are important things. And, and you know, support, definitely, you know, um, be there when you, when they need you and then don't be there when they need you too sometimes, you know, that I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but you know, there are times when you kind of have to just sort of let the person kind of walk into the wall. And then I have done that many times. And he has a guide dog. So imagine me watching him not trust his guide dog at times and walk into a tree branch or fall down in a hole. Aww. So you kind of have to let them do you have to just let them be them. But also, as Adam said, at least what works for us in our family, as well as a lot of our friends, um, we have both friends that are visually impaired and blind as well as those that you know aren't at all. But the one thing we do front and center is uh, we're honest, we acknowledge it. And so that way other people, when we're with them, understand why I might be going to find the men's room with Adam or whatever might need to happen um, rather than it kind of being so awkward. Yeah, and the other thing is don't be afraid to ask questions. I mean, you know, if you have a question, ask it. Or ask for help. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I think you yes. can't do acceptance without dealing with the loss though. And that's something I had to learn. It, it is a loss, you vision vision loss. It's a, it's an emotional loss, you know, part of your body that's not working, that that's going, going, going. And once you kind of get past that and understand that, it's so much easier to go into acceptance, you know? That's great, thank uh, you. Also, I know, you know, we have a calendar of events that we're, we're posting, but, um, just as a FYI, our leadership team, the last time we were all together, 
Um, and I think this came from actually Delaney, as well as a little bit of myself. We are going to hold a virtual Zoom meeting like this, but the theme actually will be for family and friends. Mm -hmm. And how do you support, you know, everybody? Because it's not always just the person that is losing their sight that needs the support. Um, we all kind of go crazy together. Right. So this is a journey for all of us. That's great. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. Any other questions? We're coming up on 8.30. So I want to absolutely thank the two of you. Um, I thought this was amazing. And the moment I met you at Vision Walk, I, I just knew I had to like follow these people, <laughs> figure out who you were and, and, you know, hear your stories. So because of that, you know, here we are tonight. And um, again, you guys did great as, as I'm sure you do all the time. Uh, yeah. so our pleasure. And thank you so much for inviting us. This is truly, it was a beautiful evening. Thank you. I love yes. the interaction. One of my favorite things is working with the pre-med students, you know, with the advocacy work, because it's interactive, you know? So I love this tonight. This was wonderful. Thank you for inviting us. Thank right. you Thank so much. You. Thanks and for please coming. let us know when the next walk is going to be on the schedule calendar so we can. Absolutely. Yeah. And you're more than welcome to join all of our different yep. events. We'll have in-person events, virtual events. And I'm sure everybody here would love to meet you in person as well. Yes, in person. I'm telling you, trying to say, try, tell a joke or a story on Zoom is like, because <laughs> there's no audience reaction. <laughs> My brother said, just laugh in your head. Hopefully they'll be happy. <laughs> thank you so much. You guys were amazing. Yeah, yeah thank you, Jacqueline and Kristen. Thank, thank you. you. It was great you to talk. Amazing. Thank you so much. All right, thanks, very, thank Hi, you very much. That was great. And Nathan, we're going to let you wrap things up. We reminder, we have our February 29th event next virtual community connections. Nathan? Thanks, Adam. Oh, that's what I was going to mention. Our next events on February 29th. We're also going to send out a calendar uh, or list of all of our calendar events for the next year to everyone who's attended this call. Uh, you can also find those on the Foundation Fighting Blindness website on the LA chapter page. We're going to keep that up to date with all of our up, uh, information and upcoming events. But please keep joining us for these events. We're going to send out the registration for all of the events upcoming. We've got community, virtual community connections, like Sherry mentioned. We're planning a in-person bowling social in March, some other in-person activities later in the spring, and really ramping up for a huge vision walk this fall. So thank you for being a part of the LA chapter. Thanks for helping our community grow, and we'll continue producing calls and events like this for you. Wonderful. Thank idea. you, everyone. Thank everybody, you. good so night. Nice. Thank you. Good night. And good